sack by Michael Strahan. I will always remember the Giant fans. Welcome to another edition of Giants Chronicles here on MSG. I'm Bob Papa. Today we focus in on quarterback Eli Manning, a two-time Super Bowl champion. However, Eli's start with the Big Blue wasn't as smooth as many had projected. The uh, San Diego Chargers and the New York Giants have exchanged their draft picks. Eli Manning and Philip Rivers. He was the number one player on our board, and if you're looking for quality, uh, that's the direction that you go in. This is a young player with great ability, and, uh, and he was within striking distance for us, and we took it. And he brought me into news, now officially a member of the New York Football Giants, Growing up, you always knew about the Giants organization, and you just thought about this great tradition, great history, but really not until I became a Giant, uh, where you, you truly learn uh, why you thought those things, and that, and that all those things are true. Just the, everything that, uh, you know, Wellington Mayor has done for the game of football. You know, the fact that he has, you know, the Duke is on every football right now. You, you get to learn about the Mayor family, the Tish family now. They're truly 100% committed uh, to football and, and to their organization and to having success. But for Eli Manning, success would not come early or easily. Play hard, play fast, everything's gonna work out, all right? Oh, we gotta win. Win on three, man. One, two, three, man. He looks, he starts to run. Oh, he's hit. Manning was nearly separated from his senses. And welcome to the NFL, Eli Manning. It's a learning process, and, and, and really the best way to learn is to get that experience. Make those mistakes, and you learn from the mistakes. And, uh, you know, it's hard to do as a coach and as a player. You want to have success right away. It just doesn't you know, always work that way. Blitz on, Manning lops one left, looking for shocking intercepted. That's an opportunity gone by the board, folks. You come in as a rookie quarterback, and the head coach is always going to be a little nervous because the guy who's supposed to be the leader, the guy who's supposed to know everything, is a rookie, he doesn't know everything. So at the beginning, you know, Coach Coughlin was making me draw up every single blitz that the team had done and how, what protections we were gonna to use to pick up those blitzes. And I had to draw it and turn it into them every week. And he would grade me and look at them. And that's kind of the way the relationship started, him challenging me and kind of forcing me to learn as quickly as possible or helping me learn as quickly as possible. Now, I know this offense is, as well as anybody and, and, and Coach Gilbride, you know, having been with him, when we see a certain defense, if we see something going on, we're thinking the same way. So when I see a young receiver, I can tell him exactly how I want it done. You beat him inside the five, break it, but if he jumps inside, it's going to really fail. Just like double press wide, you have to get real wide. Though. I'm not trying to tell him he's doing it wrong or try to get on anybody. I'm just trying to help uh, that player get more catches, get more touchdowns, and, and uh, so we'll have more fun playing football. Manning back to throw. Steps up, deep ball down the middle of the field. He's got Cruz, 35, 30, 20, 10, 5, touchdown Giants! 73 yards, and the Giants have the lead back. And there's not a, a better feeling in a football game when you see a certain blitz, and hey, this is something we've talked about. This is something we've talked about in that quarterback meeting room. We said we're gonna check to this protection, we're gonna go to this play, and it works just how you practice it or how you imagined it in your mind. And he drops straight back to throw. Has time, deep ball down the left sideline, and the pass is caught by Randall, and he falls into the end zone for a touchdown. That's why you do all the hard work, to get to that situation, to get to that feeling in a game. Through hard work and determination, Eli has become one of the NFL's elite quarterbacks. And his physical toughness has earned him the reputation as one of the game's most durable and resilient players. Toughness comes from just the desire to, to be there with your teammates. I want to be out there every play. I feel when I'm on the field, we're going to have a chance to have success, and I know my offense alignment, they're hurting every week. They're getting hit every single play. And running backs, receivers, they're going to take shots. They're going to 
play through pain and when they see, hey, I'm, I'm gonna take hits, I'm gonna work like heck to get back healthy and get healed up as quickly as possible to get on the field, it makes those guys play harder for you because they know I'm giving it my all. I work hard during the off season in, in my weight training and my conditioning to make sure I stay healthy and I'm there week in and week out. Be great tonight, baby. Be great, baby. Dominate, dominate. Eli has not missed a start in his nine seasons as the Giants quarterback. A streak of 147 games that is the longest among current NFL signal callers. And along the way, he's treated Giants fans to some of the most memorable moments in NFL history. Got a fight out of it, still fights out of it, now throws it deep downfield, wide open Tyree who makes the catch! What a play by Manning! Manning out of the shotgun set and he's back to throw. Climbs the pocket, deep ball down the left sideline, and it's going to be caught. Was he inbounds? Yes! Manningham on the sideline. The wow. officials say he got his feet in. And the Giants have won Super Bowl 46! Still will, the heart of a champion. It's definitely special. The first time, was it was all kind of brand new. It kind of came out of nowhere. The second one, you end up thinking, you know, you're thinking about the other guys who were getting their first Super Bowl and, and the emotions that they must be going through with that first one. You, you know, realize that you're the world champions and just, uh, you know, all, all the different things that are going through your mind. So it, it's an exciting time you know, for myself. But then you think about those guys who are going through it for the first time, you know, what that feeling is and, and smiling for them. Stay tuned for more Giants Chronicles, Eli Manning. Your first name again? Eli Manning. That's a long first name. Now, Eli, I want you to stand up straight because we're going to do a special magic trick, okay? Okay, are you ready? Yeah. Now, repeat after me in just a second, but repeat after me loud. Let's practice. Me, Not now. <laughs> Watch how fast he's moving. With the skill and dexterity of a master magician. Around and around, he's tying himself up. <laughs> Wait, Eli, Eli, don't tie your arm up, okay? You're getting wrapped up in your work, Eli. 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 Wait a minute, Eli. Welcome back to Giants Chronicles, Eli Manning. Two Super Bowl championships and two MVP awards have earned Eli the love and admiration of millions of Giants fans. But despite all of his football success, Eli is just a regular guy with his feet firmly planted on the ground. And he feels that these qualities come from growing up as a member of a caring, loving family. Well, I think both my parents raised my brothers and I just to try to be good people, be nice to people. We had to say yes sir and, and no ma'am, and if we didn't say that and uh, they heard us, that was kind of the, the biggest thing you could do uh, wrong. Being polite and respectful aren't the only traits Eli learned from his mom Olivia and dad Archie. My dad's very uh, organized. He, he wants everything perfect. His desk is, is perfect and, and organized. His calendar is written out for the next month and what he's doing. And I never really thought I was like that. And I always got on him about that. When he would come uh, over to my apartment in college, I'd perfectly mess it up and have him, he would fix it and I'd go mess it up again. He'd come back and fix it. But I've known over the years, I'm, I'm getting that way. I like everything very organized and, and, and have a plan. From my mom, my mom's just the one that kind of, you know, uh, you, you can let the little things kind of slide underneath the table and go away. I, I don't get real upset if something goes wrong. I don't worry about things that, that aren't important and I try to concentrate on the things that do matter in my family and my job and my health and those type of things and, and just try to, uh, you know, in, enjoy life. Okay. The lessons Eli learned from his mom and dad helped shape him into a meticulous and resilient person who strives for perfection. But being the youngest of three boys also taught him some valuable survival skills as well. I think being the youngest of two older brothers will definitely teach you to have a little toughness to you. You can go cry to mom every time that they beat up on you or, or uh, push you down or playing uh, knee football or playing football in the, in the backyard and they tackle you a little bit harder than they're supposed to tackle a five-year-old when, when they're 10 and 12. But uh, I think you just kind of learn to not really complain about anything or start crying unless you're really hurt. You know, if you cried about everything, they would just ignore you. But I think they would know if, if I was really hurt, they would know the case. Let him cry. <laughs> 
And if Eli did happen to stumble as a result of the friendly tussles with his brothers, there was always one special person there to catch him when he fell. My mom and I are very close. And when my brothers went off to college, you know, I was in seventh grade and my dad was still traveling and, do, and, and announcing uh, football games and still working and leaving some. My mom and I uh, were at home a lot. I'm the baby, I'm, I was her last one. But instead of her cooking for one, we would, we would go to dinner or we would just kind of hang out. I talk to my mom you know, almost every day or every other day and make sure if she needs anything, I'm, I'm quick to jump up and, and, and get her whatever she needs and make, make life simple for her. She likes to come up to New York and, and seeing me. I, I think now she really likes to come see uh, her grandbaby, but uh, you know, I, I make her pretend she's coming to see me still. In 2011, Eli and his wife, Abby, had their first child, Ava. Two years later, a second child, Lucy, joined the family. And as Eli's family grew, so did his perspective on life and football. It's a different feeling, and you never really can explain it or know it. Just going home, right when you open that door, you drop everything, and you just go look for it, hoping she's not taking a nap so you can have that hour or two hours of daddy time and play around and see what she's doing new and see if she can give you a hug or she's got a new word and she starts walking and running around. Those are exciting times, and it's been a real joy, and it's been uh, you know better than advertised. And as he peers through the haze of his success in football and the fame and attention that comes with being a two-time Super Bowl MVP, Eli has never forgotten just who he is and where he came from. I don't think my personality has changed since I've been in New York, and I don't believe it changes by where you live or whether you have failures or success. You still want to stay the same person. You know, I grew up in Louisiana, went to school in Mississippi. I still have a lot of southern uh, tendencies, I, I would say. I still try to keep that personality and a lot of those southern traditions and apply it to everyday life. I go home for a little bit in the off season for two months, but besides that, I'm here for 10 months out of the year. And so this is where I've made friends. This is where my wife and I have been for a long time and, and had our, our child here. Right, thanks, Eli. Thanks, guys. Come on, boys. So you, you definitely feel that this is home for me. Stay tuned for more Giants Chronicles, Eli Manning. Welcome back to Giants Chronicles, Eli Manning. Although Eli now considers the New York area his home, he still has a special fondness for his southern roots. Back in Jackson, Mississippi, he and his wife, Abby, have helped raise over $3 million for the outpatient clinic at Blair E. Batson Children's Hospital, the only children's cancer care center in Mississippi. Mississippi is still very dear to me. My parents are from Mississippi. Uh, they both went to college at, at Ole Miss. Uh, you know, I went to college there and grew up going to games. And so, you know, I wanted to find something to give back. Ah. Eli, good to see you, pal. Doing okay? Yes, sir. Good, good. The clinics uh, see about 150,000 kids every year. This is Chiquita. Chiquita. Go Giants. <laughs> <laughs> Kids can come in and just, you know, get checkups. If they're feeling sick, hopefully it's just, you know, they can get some medicine, they can get looked at real quickly and get sent home. If it's something more seriously, then, then you have to deal with that. Hey, hey, right. There you go. There you go. Okay. You're on TV, there you go. Yay. You see that you're helping people live a better life. And so that's the most satisfying thing. And each summer back in his home state of Louisiana, he hosts a football camp for hundreds of the state's finest athletes. Motivate me, baby. Give me the play. Hard work on three, hard work on three. One, two, three. Hard work. The Manning Passing Academy was founded 18 years ago by the first family of football, Archie, Cooper, Peyton, and Eli Manning. Every summer, they host a quarterback camp in their home state of Louisiana for players in grades 8 through 12 to teach them the fundamentals of throwing and catching the football. Well, the football camp is really special because I get to spend time with my dad and my two brothers. We don't get a whole lot of time around each other, so to, to get everybody together, uh, you know, that, that makes it special. I start far left, you start far right, and you work towards the middle. Got it. The reason I love that camp is it's a chance to get my boys together. I tell them, I said, you know, I really want every kid to go back home 
to tell their daddy or their granddaddy that, yeah, Peyton and Eli worked with me. The best thing probably about coming to this is uh, the Mannings because, you know, they interact with the kids and they really love actually being out there with us. Those linebackers can't tell the difference and that's when you hit that seam to that tight end running wide open right down the middle of the field. I started off as a camper going into my freshman year in high school and I've seen the camp grow. In the first year we had about 100 athletes there. Now we've had up to 1,200 athletes. It's grown and bigger and we get a lot of great college kids come every year to be counselors. It makes watching college football a lot, a lot more fun because you, you get to see the, these, these guys and you know, get to work with them for a long weekend and, and then you get to follow their, their college and professional career. Shabam! And as Eli's summer camp has grown and flourished, so is his career as a pitch man for some major brands in national commercials. Wow, Eli Manning really does drive a Toyota. Eli Manning runs on Duncan. I need these guys to come up big today. It's football on your phone, that's what I said. It's football on your phone, you can watch it in bed. Take it with you wherever you go. Show your friends and watch them all go home. But when Saturday Night Live asked him to host in 2007, he was a little apprehensive about taking on that starring role. Three, two. Hi, I'm Eli Manning, and I'm hosting SNL this week with musical guest Rihanna. SNL is just something that's always kind of on that list. And they asked me in 2007 after the first Super Bowl, and I just said I wasn't quite ready for it. And I said, if we win another Super Bowl, I'll do it after that one. Very good, Eli. I want you on my team for SNL. Really? That's great. I was on Do Center Live. I was going to go all out. And I was going to make sure I was at every meeting, every practice, rehearsing and, and doing everything so I would go out there and be comfortable and, and try to do a good job. I mean, he's a really good sense of humor. Obviously, we worked with Peyton, and I think people Run know Peyton has a really good sense of humor. But Eli's just as good, if not a little bit better. Hit me. You ready? Yes, I'm on it. Almost. And then there's ESPN, who came calling for a typical slice of Manning life. Having two older brothers and having that special bond and relationship where they were quick to bust on me or make fun of me. Yeah, we were always uh, just kind of messing around and, and, and doing, you know, goofing off. And, you know, my dad kind of looks back and, and gives that look. And just kind of, you know, what are y'all doing? You know, stop it, you know, or, or I'm going to get on y'all a little bit. And uh, we, we got that look quite a few times. Although Eli spends as much time as he can during the offseason down south with his family, it is here in the New York area, specifically Hoboken, New Jersey, that he has established his new home. When you become the quarterback of a team, you really have to become a part of the community and help out uh, around the communities in New York and New Jersey. This is Eli Manning. You can say hi. Nice to see you. Hey, that's me. Nice. That's why. So that's we're why. taking him around, showing him uh, you know, the challenges that we face here in oh, the excellent. western side of the city. Excellent. So. I've been in Hoboken for eight years. I was here during the hurricane. It's pretty frightening. The wind's blowing, you know, 100 miles an hour, shaking all the windows. About 8 o'clock, all of a sudden, you know, you can look out some window and see the Hudson River, uh, you know, coming onto the streets. It's How much water is right here? Is it... Well, the water, actually, at the next block, I can show you where. He reached out to me and, uh, and said, well, you know, what can I do? And, and uh, we came up with this idea of walking around and just showing him the devastation. You can see it here, uh, yeah, this okay. whole entire area. I think it's pretty eye-opening when, when you see any place firsthand and the destruction that, you know, the hurricane brought on or the flooding. I think the people of Hoboken have dealt with it wonderfully. The community has gathered together to help out each other and, and start rebuilding and, and saying there's no, there's no option, but, you know, we're coming back. I'm just so impressed that he spent the day walking around with me, and he really sort of spread hope today. Really, really appreciate you know, it. Thank Thanks. you so much. Okay. All right, All right let take me know. care. All right. Good to meet you. Likewise. Stay tuned for more Giants Chronicles, Eli Manning. <laughs> Welcome back to Giants Chronicles, Eli Manning. At the age of 32, Eli has achieved professional success as an NFL player and personal fulfillment as a member of his community. But he feels that the final chapter of his story has yet to be written. I'm not done. I'm not, I'm not retiring uh, right now. I still feel I have a lot more to prove. I, mean, I, I still have a lot more 
years of playing at a high level and I can raise my level of play. Who makes the catch? Touchdown Giants! I still have dreams. I still have things I want to reach. So that's what's keeping me going every year. And I think just that desire to get better. You know, I, I can become a better football player. Uh, I can help out more people. I can become a better father and a better husband. I need to keep working. I need to keep pushing myself. And, you know, when I was drafted and said, I'm, I'm going to work hard. I'm going to be committed to, to trying to be a good person and a good player and do everything I can to to help out the Giants, and that's kind of still the, the same thought process that I go through every day. And as he continues to grow and develop as a player and a person, Eli knows that it will only secure his position as one of the greatest players in New York Giants history. There's been a lot of unbelievable Giants players in the past, and I'm not worried about where I rank amongst them right now. I'll never be worried about it, but for now, i got to become better as a quarterback and as a leader of this team, and, and those are the things I'm working on. One of the things that has served Eli so well in his time with the New York Giants is the fact that he has that very calm demeanor, never getting too high, never getting too low. But here's one other thing you need to know about Eli Manning. He's one of the great practical jokers in that locker room, respected for his toughness, his wit, and his humor with his teammates. Eli Manning, a two-time Super Bowl champion and a true Giant great. That wraps it up for this week's show. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Giants Chronicles here on MSG. This segment is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on your car insurance. Visit GEICO.com.